there's a serious problem out there and I'm guilty of it. Too many bottles open. What do you do about it? Let's answer that. Now, right off the rip, there's going to be somebody that say, why would you have too many bottles open? Listen, it happens, okay? And unless you put a lot of thought into it, to be really honest with you, most of us are going to get in that situation at one point or another. But what do you do if you find yourself with too many bottles open? I mean, it seems pretty obvious. Drink them, right? Well, if you have too many bottles open, you're probably not going to be able to drink things too quickly. We're going to go over five things you could possibly do. Some are pretty uh, straightforward and honest, and some are a little tongue-in-cheek, but do still have a point, so stick with me. I'm gonna give you my best shot here. You might be able to tell I'm playing with a little sinus thing going on so you don't see any drinks in my hand today. I'm sorry, folks, I'd love to be drinking along with you. And I don't think sinus medication plus drinking is the best thing to really be doing. Number five is one of the more straightforward, serious ones is start an infinity bottle. This is underrated. Most people are not even thinking about doing this. And in all seriousness, it's an easy way to actually deplete some of those bottles you're down to the very end on. You simply just go ahead and make sure a dedication of two ounces 12 pours is going to fill out up. So, you know, you may not kill all your bottles, but you'll certainly go a little bit of ways towards reducing some of that collection. You're like, all right, Nate, that was pretty obvious. So give me something a little more less obvious than number four. Well, let's go self-help mode for number four. And what I'm going to introduce is the concept of habit stacking. Some of you may have heard of this. Some of you may have not. This is a way for you to either develop good habits and put them together and get on a roll by chaining things together in events or chaining uh, a this for that type situation, or a way to ensure that you try to decrease the number of times you do something that's less desirable. So in this case, the less desirable thing, opening a new bottle so you have other bottles open because you already have too many, right? So here's what I'm gonna suggest you do for that. For every new bottle you wanna open, you're gonna have to do 25 naked burpees in front of the mirror for yourself. Okay, okay, that's probably a terrible idea because some of you out there are like, no problem, I'm a fit person, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm gonna knock it out and just gonna have more open bottles. And so that's not gonna work for you. But a lot of us are gonna be like, 25 burpees? You can't even do 25 burpees. So if you really wanna take that to the extreme and use that example, that's great. But a kid, obviously, but habit stacking is still one way you can absolutely do this. So dedicating yourself to a little bit of time, uh, maybe a month, maybe two months, where it's one empty before you open one new would help you keep that cut down. And maybe even find yourself saying, I'll cut a few down before I open that next one. So back on the serious side a little bit, one of the easiest things you can do and have a little fun with, blending. If you haven't thought about it before, you have all these open bottles. You know a lot of their flavor profiles, if it's something you enjoy, something you don't enjoy, it's a great way to kind of sneak it in with some other bottles. You could even do this by yourself. You could do this with your family, with friends. Um, it's honestly just one of the best ways you can kind of have fun with bourbon, especially if you have that bottle, you're kind of like, man, I'm good with this bottle, but I don't see myself finishing it. And it's not worthy of a drain pour. So practice a little blending and have some fun with it. See what you can do. Put these blends together, let them sit for a week or two, come back and revisit them. Maybe you'll find yourself something magical and become the next Dixon Deadman, who knows? All right, so number two is sample swaps. Quit being elementary, it's not that kind of sample swapping, okay, guys, come on, seriously. But this could really be a way that you could actually get rid of some bottles of some things maybe that someone else wants to try and get a small sample of something that you want to try back so you don't have another bottle taking up all that real estate on your shelf. So question is, Nate, I don't know where I would be able to do that. Well, local whiskey societies, Facebook groups that are reputable, that's a tough one, you may have to check those out. Um, they're few and far between, but the more local, the better generally. Um, but think about that, you, you certainly have people that you may enjoy drinking with. Um, if, you're, if you have no place to start, ask your local store owner if there's any groups in your area. Um, and they'll probably point you to some social medias, to be honest with you. But most of these groups are good places, and a lot of them uh, have people that are the broad spectrum of beginning whiskey drinkers to really advanced whiskey drinkers and everything in between. So that's actually a really good way to be very honest with you because giving away two ounces a couple times may kill the bottle or may get you closer to it. All right, the number one tip, and if you guys haven't caught on by now, it's kind of been filtered in among all the other ones, is something you actually learned or at least started learning when you were a toddler. And that's just sharing. I know, earth shattering, right? Clearly, Nate, you're just brilliant, right? No, I'm not. Uh, okay, well, uh, okay, I'm not. But yeah, so all these ideas culminate around just the idea of sharing and making a community. That's what we're trying to do here. A lot of us, at least, um, there are some dirt bags out there that aren't, and that's fine. We'll take care of them. That sounds really bad. We're not gonna do anything like that drastic to them, but we'll do something. 
So let me give you a couple of examples of sharing. Like, you know, if you're on one of those dating apps and you finally get somebody to swipe whichever direction you're supposed to swipe, you know, maybe bring them a sample on that first date. That's creepy. Oh, oh, yeah. No, no, wife Sarah's probably right. That's probably a really bad idea. Bringing a little brown vial of something that somebody doesn't know what it is is probably not good at a first date. So scratch that, scratch that, scratch that. But gifting samples to someone that you know and trust and they trust you could be a good way to go about that. Also, host a bottle kill party. You know, make sure it's very clear. No one should bring a bottle extra to open. It's okay. They're going to be drinking from your collection today. Uh, you know, you might have to entice them with one or two nicer bottles if maybe you're trying to kill some mid-range bottles or potentially have cocktail options for this bottle kill as well. You can get a couple of mixers, encourage people to bring some of their favorite mixers. That's another way that you can absolutely kill off some bottles pretty quick, actually, to be honest with you. Last thing I'll throw out there for you guys along the sharing tip is one of my favorites, and I just don't do it often enough, to be honest with you, but it absolutely is sort of the same idea as the last one I just gave you, but host a blind tasting. And this could just be three or four of your buddies, and you pick three or four bottles. Ideally, they would fit in the same category, you know, rye or you know, weeders or whatever, so that you don't have this huge variance. So if you have that going on, where you have enough bottles open, you can find two, three, four, ideally, you know, not more than that probably. Um, you're gonna be able to kill some bottles pretty quickly one night and have a great night with your friends. I hope maybe you found some humor in this video. I hope maybe I even threw one idea out there that you hadn't thought of or really had in the back of the brain and really hadn't thought of in some time. And I'm gonna be back later this week. Hopefully this sinus thing is cleared up. We can actually do some drinking together because I got a cool bottle or two I wanna share and go through with you guys. So until then, cheers.